Okay, so let's go ahead and do a numerical example. So let's say that if he's feeling ironic, our hipster friend, the probability of him staying ironic is 0 0.8. The probability of him stopping being ironic is 0 0.2. Like say he goes back home. <laughs> he's back home to his parents' house. So the probability of him staying that way is 0 0.3. But, you know, maybe he'll go back out in the town and cause some more ironicness. And so it's 0 0.7. And so... Um, Let's go ahead and draw our transition matrices. Let's call this A prime, B prime for like tomorrow, and this is today. And so today, from tomorrow, the probability of going from being ironic to staying ironic is 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. And so this tells us that, of course, if he's here, being ironic, probability is 0.8 of staying ironic, and so on and so forth. But we want to know more than that. You know, this is like, you know, kind of a complicated system. We might want to know... Well, how is he going to be in general after like 10 days? Like, what's the probability that he's going to be ironic 10 days from now if he was ironic today? Well, let's look at just a simple case of the next day, two days from now, that is. Let's say today he is feeling ironic. What is the probability that two days from now he's going to be ironic again? Well, we take, say today he's ironic, tomorrow he's ironic, the next day he's ironic. That would be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. But actually, he could have gone from here and then gone back. So there's two routes. So we do 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.7 will give us the probability that he'll be here two days from now, given that he started here. If you remember, if you remember your matrix math, that all that talk reduces to squaring this matrices. That is, for any matrices P, any transitional matrices P, the probabilities associated with the different states after n number of days is just raising that matrices to that power of uh, n. And so in this case, it would be um, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, sorry, I made this too small, uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.45 actually, and this would be 0 0.5, 0 0.55. They're, they're like 0 0.45 and 0 0.55. Sorry, that's too small. But the idea here is that it's that simple. It's just a simple matrices raising this system to the power n, where n is the number of iterations, will give you the probability of being in each state given the prior state. So if I start off in A in the very beginning, two days from now, the probability of being here again is 0.7, and so on and so forth for this whole matrices. That's, it's a pretty powerful little tool. Now let's think about this. What if I set n to 100? What do you think the values might be? Well, the values, if I raise this to the hundredth, if I, after 100 days, it actually is going to be 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And if I did 1,000 days, it would be the same thing. If I did 10,000 days, it would be the same thing. And you go down and try this on your computer. And you go, well, wait a minute, what? Think about what this is saying. This is saying that if I'm in state A, the probability of being A, you know, 10, 10, uh, 100, years, 100, 100 days from now is 0 0.6. And the probability of being in a non-ironic state is 0.4. And if I was in ironic in non-ironic state before, it's still the same thing. That says that after about a hundred days or a thousand days or, or some some amount, that it doesn't matter how I started off, the probability of being in that next state um, after some n number of days is the same. And that this doesn't change. It asymptotes. And this is particularly um, a particularly important phenomenon that occurs with the very specific type of uh, state system I created here. I kind of cheated. So this is called a ergodic regular uh, Markov system or, or, or um, you know state system. And what that means is ergodic just means that the system, can every state in the system can access every other state. So here A can access B, B can access A. And if I had A through Z or, or A through some unknown letter, um, it to be ergodic is that I'd have to be able to, from every state, get to every other state. Maybe not directly, but they got to get to every other state. To be regular, it has to be the case that some for some N, there exists a transition matrices that has all non-zeros. That is, all the states can connect to all the states connect to each other. There has to be at least one n, and that will define a Markov chain that is regular and thus also ergodic. 
Remember, so all things that are ergodic are regular, but not all things that are regular. I mean, sorry, all things that are regular are ergodic, but not all things that are ergodic are regular. Um, you can have one, for example, that oscillates between two different states, um, and that it, therefore all states can reach other states, but it won't be regular. Um, but in general, an ergodic regular uh, transition matrices or, or system will do this. It'll asymptote to where, independent of the initial states, you have a static fixed uh, vector, row vector, that defines the probabilities of reaching each one. And we're going to go through the different ways of calculating this and different ways of calculating this value, for example, using um, eigenvalues. But um, in general, so this is a very specific type of system we're talking about. These things can be connected in a lot of different ways. This can be, for example, this could be 1, and this could be 0 to go across, whereas this could be 1, and this could be 0. And what that means is that A always stays at A, and if you start off at B, you immediately go to A. And so A would be considered some kind of absorbing uh, state, whereas B would be considered a transient state. And there's all this language to describe these different things. But in general, we're just trying to calculate this value and to see how the system behaves over time. And different systems have different behaviors. And in particular, we're interested in the ones that have this asymptotic behavior, which is characteristic of ergodic regular matrices. Okay, so before I do the Bayesian ninja example, there are some requests to see the calculation for this using eigenvalue decomposition. Uh, because in general, there's kind of two ways of doing this. Like, because we have computers and we're using MATLAB, raising p to the n equals 100 or 1,000 or even 10,000 isn't terribly difficult. Um, some, if p is pretty big, it becomes actually impossible. Um, so what you can do is you can do uh, simulations. Uh, you could basically create your transition matrices and then start off in one point and then have the thing go through it using a Monte Carlo. Basically, it's a Monte Carlo simulation where each state has a different probability. And you kind of just play it out over time and look and then count up the values and see how the thing performs over time. Uh, it's a little laborious, but it's people do it. Um, but the other way people do it is with this called eigenvalue decomposition. Uh, can I spell it? Let's see. E-I-N-G eigen, eigen decomp. We'll just call it that. I'll get away with that one. Um, and what that is, is taking advantage of the properties of this, that it's probabilistic, that is the row vector sum to 1. So you got, it's, it's probabilistic, these guys sum, each row sums to 1. And that uh, in the limit, as n goes to infinity, this approaches a row vector w. Right? So basically these are a bunch of w's, and that sum to 1, and they're all equal. Well, if we, do, if we look at the math of that, if we take w and we multiply by those rows of w's, what we get back is w. And so what that leads to is w times the, times the transition matrices equals w. Well, actually, 1 times w. Now, if you guys remember back to your math with eigenvalued, uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors, um, I'll reference you a video if I can find one. Or maybe I'll make one, we'll see. Um, basically what this is, is the left eigenvector of the matrix P uh, corresponding to the eigenvalue of 1. So this is the left uh, eigenvector. So what we can do is we can calculate those values and take the eigenvector. So we can basically get the eigenvectors of P and take the eigenvector that has an eigenvalue 1, and that will give us W. And that's what it is. That's basically all you do. And we'll implement that in MATLAB uh, after I show you the Bayesian Ninja example.